Okay. So we've got this monstrous equation. Which I think is gorgeous. I still think it's a monster. <laughs> and we're going to try to make it more manageable. More understandable. Mm-hmm. And how do um, we do that? So we'll start with we'll start with the scary thing. Okay. Um, so we have two things. We've got space and time. And yeah. if there was a way somehow of getting rid of one of those variables, life would be simpler. So how could you get rid of time? So let's look at our maybe we should look at our hose. Our hose analogy. Yeah. Okay, so we have a hose. There's our pretty faucet. And it's going into this hose. Mm -hmm. And we'll say that it starts pretty full of water. That's right. Um, and then we turn the water on. Mm -hmm. And so there's stretchy sides, but not too stretchy. So the water is gonna gonna push against the sides, and, and it's so gonna cause yeah, it's gonna cause the the hose to sort of stretch out. And that's the equivalent of charging the, the capacitor. That's right. The stretchiness is the capacitor. It's okay, so you. Right, we're exaggerating for the sake of effect, but the hose is now nice and big. And the stretchiness, as our, our water flows through the hose, is going to sort of move down right. this, this and hose. Right. And so what will happen is the capacitor will take time to charge. But if we wait long enough, what will happen um, to that, that change in diameter to the stretchiness? If we wait long enough, then it'll just stay fully charged. Ah, so now the capacitor is fully charged. And what happens to a capacitor when it's fully charged? It doesn't change. Ah, so water might still be flowing out the little holes inside of the hose, but it's not going to be expanding anymore. Okay, so we've gotten rid of this time constant. That's right, right? because remember, this time constant came from the uh, capacitor equation, which is C dV dt. Mm -hmm. And now the voltage is no longer, or the pressure is no longer changing with time. So now we're dealing with a steady state situation. Okay. And, and it's all based it's all upon this. x. All right. Now, the beauty is that becomes an ordinary differential equation. Let's write that down. This is lambda squared d squared vm of x over dx squared minus vm of x equals zero. Yeah. Perfect. Now That's more manageable. Exactly. Now we're not going to show you how to get to the solution, but we're going to show you a solution and show you that it's right. Okay. So V m of x is equal to V infinity, right? Mm -hmm. Time. Or v naught. V naught. Uh, yeah, V naught. That's right. The starting point. Starting point. At times e to the minus x over lambda. And lambda is this space, space constant. constant. Thing. That's right. Should we write that? Down space constant, lambda yeah. equals space constant. We're going to get rid of this yeah, first. That's so. fine. Now that we've got a picture in our head. That's right. So lambda equals, equals space constant. Space. All right, so let's, if we have the cable and we assume that it's, so let's just show the cable for a moment and let's show that we're recording from the point of injection in the center and then all the way along it, we have little electrodes stuck into it that we're recording. So that's going to be our zero point, and then we're recording to the left and to the right multiple points. Really quick, first, yes. we should probably check this equation. Oh, sure. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay. Probably check our solution. Here. Our solution. It sounds like a good idea. So we're going to take the derivative twice, mm -hmm. and then put it back into the original equation. So what's the let's first see. derivative? Dv. Dv. Let's just write it as dv mm -hmm. of x. Right equals and so, now e to the k, e to the x the derivative of e to the x is just e, e to, to the, the x. x e to the kx is just k, k e, e to, to the, the kx, KX. Yep. and here k is minus one over lambda so it's minus one over lambda times the original thing v naught e to the minus x over lambda now the second derivative just take the derivative again squared. is well let's see a minus one over lambda times the minus one over lambda is just going to be one over lambda squared the minuses will cancel v naught e to the minus x over lambda good and now let's put that into the original equation so okay. it's lambda squared times one over lambda squared v naught e to the minus x over lambda minus our v naught. v naught e to the minus e x over lambda. And you can see immediately the lambda squares cancel, and that equals zero. So it works. Okay. okay. That's the solution. So now we can accept this, and now we can start thinking about how it's going to work. That's right. What does it look like? So let's plot as a function of space, since time has dropped out, mm -hmm. let's plot what the voltage 
looks like from the center out. Okay. So we have space along the x-axis, distance, and it's zero in the center. That's where we're injecting. So we have positive x and negative x here. Positive, negative. negative. This is distance. Distance. Excellent. And then along the y-axis, we have voltage. Okay. And we start at V naught, and this tells us when x is equal to zero, e to the zero is one. Mm -hmm. We're at V naught. So we're at V naught. So, so at zero, we're at V naught. And that yeah. would be this point that's where right. we're injecting the current. And now as x gets larger, we see that's a ex negative exponent. What's going to happen to e to a negative exponent? It's going to drop off exponentially. Exactly. So it's going to fall off on either side, away from that center point. And now we can start to understand how important the time, the length constant is lambda. Let's say lambda was larger, right? Mm -hmm. That's dividing x. So if it was larger, it means that the exponent gets larger more slowly. Okay. Which means that it falls off less quickly with distance. So it's going to fall off more slowly with distance. More slow. Right. It would eventually get to our... Yeah, it gets out, but it, the same. point is... That's right. It gets the same final value of near zero, but it takes longer. Now let's say lambda is small. Mm -hmm. Now you're dividing x by a small value, so it drops much more quickly, and you have a much rap more rapid decline. Okay, so we understand now a little bit functionally what's going on. Now we have to understand what lambda is actually equal to, right? right. From the definition we did to derive this, we said that lambda. Well, this is black. Right? Sounds good. Lambda is equal to square root of the membrane resistance, Rm, divided by the internal resistance. Right? So it's like the resistance on the outside of this pipe versus the, the resistance. Flow, if we think about it in terms of, right, how hard is it to flow through the pipe mm -hmm. and how easy is it to flow out? Okay. So if you think about it in terms of the pipe, the, 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 uh, the cable, the, the hose, again, it works very nicely. If you had very big holes and you had a very narrow diameter, mm -hmm. how far would the water flow out? If we had a narrow diameter, right? And so it's hard holes, to flow. It's hard to flow through. That means Ri is large mm -hmm. and Rm is small. So what's our space constant going to look like in that case? It's going to be tiny, mm -hmm. right? Because you have a small number divided by a large number. Or if you could say if Rm is much less than Ri, then lambda is small, it flows out fast, and that's like our green line, it doesn't have a much effect very far. Out. Yeah, so if we started injecting water right in the center of our pipe, and mm -hmm. it's a teensy pipe, so it's hard to get through it, and there are huge holes in it, that's then right. by the time we get out to here, all the water's gonna be gone. That's right, we won't see any change in the pressure across the, we won't see any flow out, and we won't see any change in pressure. It'll be as if we hadn't done the injection at all, just a little, a little distance away which is what we're showing with the green thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Now let's talk red. Okay, so now we have a very, very big pipe, and we have very, very small holes. Teeny, tiny holes. Teeny holes. Okay, and now Rm is big. Rm is big, big and Ri, Ri is, is small, small, which means lambda is large. Big. And as a consequence, we're now like the red line. You see that you can get much further out. Mm -hmm. Big. Make this obvious. That's right. Lambda small. Okay. And so your water will go much, much further much out. Much, much further out. And much less That's out right. your holes. So by the way, if you're going to water a, a lawn with a hose, that those are the sorts of things you do. Now, one of the things that neurons do to help affect their space constant is they change their diameter. Okay. okay. Now, diameter is interesting because it affects both Rm and Ri. Let's see how. So let's draw the diameter right across. Good. Call that D. The space, the surface, is equal to pi d, and the area, A, is one quarter pi d squared, right? Okay, so really quickly, looking at this, if we make d large, yes. the area is going to change more than the surface. Because one goes by the square and the other goes linearly, so the ratio is going to be favor the area. Mm -hmm. So now think about what that means. If I make a large diameter axon, since the Ri is proportional to the area, and that's growing faster than the surface, which is proportional to Rm, then Ri would mean 
that. You've got a smaller RI relative um, RI is small. and a smaller relative to RM. RM is large. But it's RI is much smaller. Put multiple arrows down because it's much smaller relative to the growth in RM. Mm -hmm. So if it's much, if you're dividing a slightly larger number by a much smaller number, what happens to lambda? Then it's going to be big. Ah, so this allows you to have very large space constants. And in fact, if you're trying to send a signal through a dendrite or even passively along the cable, the way you do so is by using a very large diameter. Okay, so this would be like, yeah, this would be like our large lambda. Now, the last thing we want to do is let's imagine, let's look at this. We have a, a measuring device. Lambda is a measuring device. And in fact, if we scaled everything by lambda, all three of these graphs would lie on top of each other. Okay. So let's understand that better. Let's see what happens when x is equal to lambda, which is we're one space constant away. Okay. So then that becomes e to the minus lambda over lambda, which is just e, e to, to the, the minus, minus one, 1. Which is 1 over e. 1 over e times v naught. So v naught over e would be one space constant away, and e is about three. It's two point seven one eight two eight. So that's going to be about thirty four point three four v v naught. All right. So why don't we indicate where where you are at one space constant away on okay. our graphs? So if we're a third, that would be like there ish. Yeah. So there, 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 and there, and on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. So you can actually, if you know how far something is decayed, you can use that to figure out lambda. And if you know lambda, you can use it to predict how far things will be. And right, those are the yards, the, the measuring uh, rods that we're using in lambda. And as I said, the other cool thing is, if you wanted to make comparisons, if you scaled everything by lambda, which is how it is in the exponent here, it's x over lambda, mm -hmm. then these graphs would all look Okay, so lambda is like our measuring tool, to right. like in a measuring space. stick in, in space. space. So we've learned a very powerful thing, and then it would be good to maybe think about time. Yeah. What, what we can do that next. We'll get to that. Okay, good. Cool. Stop.